Well, it's time to do my most anticipated Moving Forward series episode of this season, and that is none other than do a Moving Forward series episode about the San Jose Earthquakes. Now, anytime when I do an episode of the Moving Forward series about the San Jose Earthquakes, I'm obviously very anticipated to do because, after all, this is my local team that I support deeply, and that this is also a team that I watch the most compared to any other team in MLS. And therefore, usually when I do a moving forward series about the San Jose Earthquakes, it's more in-depth compared to other moving forward series that I do for other teams. So without further ado, let us actually begin talking about the Quakes in terms of moving forward for them. But before I actually get into it, I did recently just watch the hour-long documentary that the Quakes made called Mayhem, and I recommend you to watch that documentary because it was a very good documentary to talk about about the the quakes in terms of their season and i think the title of that documentary pretty much also summed up what kind of season the quakes had this year i mean i think of all my time supporting this team this was probably the craziest year that i think i've ever, ever supported this team and it's not just because of the whole whole pandemic thing that has plagued the league this season but it's just gen generally how they performed this season and how much of a roller coaster and chaotic big way that they perform over the span of this this season and if you were a neutral watching this team throughout the entire season you must think that this is probably one of the most entertaining team to watch but as a fan of this team you know i'm gotta admit i really was frustrated that, of watching this team play most of the time this season and this that's even during the good time that they had because i know when things of course go go well for them you know it's definitely great that, to see them do good but can they of course sustain it and more times or not they can not do so because you know we also saw that this season besides the good part of the quakes that had especially during that october and november stretch we also saw the the horrendous this part of the quakes from this season and just downright probably looking like the worst team team ever this season and probably one of the worst mls te team in league history with the the run that they had in september where they were not only just shipping goals to to team and losing every single game but they were shipping like five six seven goals to te to to teams every single game and that just have to drop you absolutely nuts and that there was even a, a part of the season where I was really questioning my, my fandom of this team. And I was on the brink of actually thinking about canceling my season ticket because of how bad things have got, got in this team during that, that September and August stretch. Now, overall, despite the fact of, the, of how chaotic this season had, the overall record for the Quakes this season was 8-6-9 and nine, and they finished with 30 points. They scored 35 goals this season, but they allowed 51 goals this season, which is not only the worst defensive record that any other team and the most goal that any other team have, have conceded, but also they're the only team to concede 50-plus goals. And that's actually generous, the fact that, that the Quakes are actually finished with just giving up 51 goals this season because going back to what I said back in September when they were shipping five, six, and seven goals every single game, it looked like they were going to to potentially even get close to the record that FC Cincinnati had last season when they conceded 75 goals to break the record for the most goal conceded in a single season. And if the Quakes would have been close to matching that or even did the unthinkable and breaking that record in in even a short season, that has to be probably even more embarrassing than what happened with FC Cincinnati breaking that record, but only did it in a full season compared to the Quakes potentially do it even in a shortened season. Now, their goal differential was minus 16, which I believe that is one of the worst, if not the worst goal, goal differential for a, a team that made it to the playoffs this season. But in terms of their position, well, once again, they finished 8th in the Western Conference. But because this season, uh, the, the, the playoffs was expanded to 8 teams in the Western Conference, the Quakes gets the benefit of the doubt that they were the last team to make it in the, the West. But ultimately, they were eliminated by Sporting KC see, in the first round. Although I will say that that game that they played against SKC was probably not only one of the more entertaining playoff games in recent in memory in the playoffs but probably 
one of the best performances I've seen the, the Quakes play in a losing effort. I mean, they were going toe-to-toe against the top team in the West, and they were they they just unfortunately wasn't able to pre- prevail in a penalty kick shootout, but still able to push SKC really on the brinks of potentially getting embarrassed and being one of the few top seed seeded te- team to get eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. Now, in terms of MVP for this team, I mean, it has to be Chris Wondolowski. I mean, I think we probably can agree that every single season, whenever I do a moving forward series about the Quakes, the MVP always goes to Wando because he's been by far our, our best player and he is pretty much the heart heartbeat of this team. But I will also say that there are a couple of good good uh, honorable mention that could have been on my MVP list. Uh, I could have gone with Shea Salinas who of course scored a couple of really key goals during during this season. One of them of course was that incredible MLS's back tournament game and probably the best MLS's back tournament game from that tournament by by scoring the f- fourth goal to not only complete an incredible comeback against the Whitecaps but to score the winning goals to get all three points in that that game. I mean that is probably one of the more memorable goals that I will remember for a long long time as a fan of this team and I could have also gone with Jutson who at times during this season he was an absolute engine in terms of that holding mid midfielder role and at times he showed showed that he was probably the be- best or one well, of the best holding midfielder in the league but in the end I'm gonna go with Wando because of the fact that once again he carried us in the attacking portion and even though this season was the first season since 2009 that he did not register double digit goal and his record of 10 straight season with double digit goal came to to an end this season I have no doubt that if the season was was at at a full season at 34 games and it wasn't shortened like this season at, at just 23 games that Wando probably would have reached double digit again if the season would have gone 34 games now for the disappointment for this team there was definitely a lot of candidate for this also although I was very tempted to put Vega in here because of how bad he he was in ter- in in terms of being probably one of the worst goalkeeper in the league I could have also maybe gone with Youngworth or Cassia of how much they have regressed heading into the, this year year as they as in the past they were looking like they were the rock of our def- defense last season but I'm actually going to go with Vaco as the most disappointing player from this season and you know Vaco has been kind of one one of those players for the past couple of seasons it's been kind of, he's been kind of dividing some opinions in terms of of the Quakes fan base of whether or not if he's actually a decent player for the Quakes I mean there's some people that say Vaco is a decent enough player because there's times where he definitely can contribute and also when he's really in in form he can definitely be one of the most dangerous attacker in the league but then there's also the other side and I'm kind of also part of the other side where yeah you know he can de- definitely turn it on when he's actually on but there's more times or not when he's not on he basically is just kind of a lazy kind of attacker and also kind of ball hog a lot and being very very selfish with the ball and not pass it to an open teammate and that just kind of makes just I mean there's been just more time or not it just drives me crazy how many times Vaco refused to pass the ball to a teammate that could be wide open or had a better chance in terms of scoring a, a goal and that you know this season knowing the fact that those same trait of what makes me frustrated about Vaco can didn't really disappear and the fact that he never really had a a a part of this season where he kind of really turned it on like he did in the past couple of season at one point one point uh it just kind of shows me that yeah he's pro- probably going to to poten- potentially not be with this team and any longer and his time with the quakes was kind of kind of running out and unsurprisingly this season we basically decided to cut ties with him and that we also are, are able to open a DP spot because of that. Now, in terms of of Vaco and the and how, if you would would ask me in terms of of where he belong in the rankings as the most disappointing designated player in in the Quakes history, well, I would say that he probably won't be on the top three or even the top five disappointing list because. 
the Quakes, I feel like, had much more disappointing DP than Vako has when he was carrying that, that role throughout his time with the Quakes. But I would say he probably would be in the top 10 list because of the fact that, again, he's another one of those guys where there's been times where he did kind of live up to that expectation and expect what, what we what we can get out out of him being a dynamic attacker and a dynamic number 10 kind of player but there's just more times or not that he wasn't a, able to to show that and then he only kind of show it in a short spell of period and if we want to get a player that that is a dp quality level and if you want to be kind of like a dp quality level level of a central attacking midfielder or just an attacker in general you need to of course of course able to maintain form for throughout not really the entire season but at least for most part of the season you can't just have like a short spell period where you use all the sun look good and then just a couple of games later your form basically f fell off and you just end up being kind of like a very inconsistent player as i think that's kind of the best way to to describe vodka time with the the quakes for these past couple of seasons now in terms of the top goal scored for the quakes unsurprisingly it's wando with with seven goals as the top goal scored Followed by Andy Rios that actually finished five goals this season. Now, I've also been a very heavy critic in terms of Andy Rios. And if you actually follow me on Twitter, you know that I always call him a lamppost because he is absolutely useless when you're going for on the attack. But that being said, he is still able to contribute goals for in in, in some some of these games. And he actually ended up to be in the second in on the list of the top goal scorer but still i really think you know i know rios maybe he's he's trying to play in the same role that magnus Arison is which is just kind of hold on to to the ball and allow our attacker to go go forward before he decided to kind of find a way to cre create and and pass it to two teammates that is able to make the good run and find themselves in an open pin spot to basically put the ball into the back of the net but I was kind of also expecting when we first got him was a guy that maybe can solve our big issue of not actually having another reliable number nine and kind of relieve the pressure that Wando has in terms of the goal scoring department. But you know, it, you know, even with the five goals that he scored, I just feel like he's still not really live up to my expectation, and that you know, we'll see whether or not if he can continue to to do so next next season, and whether or not if he. He can continue to maybe be be that number nine player that I was hoping that can potentially be another reliable guy in terms of the goal scoring department. Then you got Christian Espinoza and Vaco in in third place and fourth place respectively with three goals, followed by Carlos Fierro with two goals to round off the list. Top assist leader, unsurprisingly, Espinoza with nine nine assists to top the charts. Then you got Tommy Thompson with four assists. Carlos Fierro with three assists and Shea Salinas and Marcos Lopez to round off that list with two assists. So what went right for the Quakes this season? Well, they made the playoffs. I mean, despite the fact that they play some chaotic soccer and also the fact that they play a very murderous schedule where when I found out that MLS was going to go go with, with a season where you only get to play against teams that is in your re regional market, yeah, that's when I knew we were probably going to be screwed because knowing the fact that in our, the region that the Quakes are playing are featuring some of the best team in the league with the likes of the Seattle Sounders, Portland Timbers, uh, LAFC, and even the the Galaxy, I thought we were screwed. Screw a potential, potentially making a run to the playoffs. But you know they were able to get get wins against both LA team. In fact, they got four wins against against both LA team, and they were also able to get points against Portland and Seattle despite the fact that there were a couple of times that they got absolutely annihilated by both of those Cascadia teams they were still still able to make it to the playoffs and just sneak in as the eighth seed uh they finished top in the group during the MLS's back tournament and I think I mentioned this before during the MLS's back tournament where if you look at all these teams that finished top in the the group stage the Quakes are probably the most surprising one like nobody expected that they were going to be finished top of the group especially that was the same group that has the defending mls cup champ champion that is the sounders in that group and the fact that they were able to finish above the the sounders and and able to not even lose a single game during that group stage yeah i, I definitely did not saw saw that 
that come in and that they were kind of really one of the biggest surprising package in terms of the group state stage part now the third thing that went right for the quakes is that again they were probably the most entertaining team to watch if you were a neutral and that you probably really enjoyed the chaotic kind of man marking scheme that they play every single game whether it either blow ups in their face or sometimes can provide some very entertaining soccer now what went wrong with this team well as i mentioned before with the chaotic kind of ways that they played this season well just because they they played that chaotic way and it might be fun for for fans to watch it doesn't mean it actually actually leads to success and more times than not when you play that kind of chaotic style and that with the way that that the quakes are also kind of being very inconsistent when they play a chaotic style like this and being kind of an unpredictable team you know you just real if you're going to potentially make a run for the playoffs playing this kind of style you better hope that those chaotic moments always li lead to you on the winning side and there's just again more times or not these chaotic ways that the quakes have, have played throughout this season doesn't really let, let them on the winning side at the end of 90 minutes and as we've seen in that skc game just because they play a very quakes type of of games in that playoff matchup they weren't able to come up in the winning side and lose in a penalty kick shootout uh the horror run in august and september is the second thing that went wrong you know i also mentioned, mentioned this earlier before i'm not really gonna go go even deeper or even talk about it again because yeah it was just so bad of how how things have gone for the quakes during that run and it's something that i really hope i don't have to re remember for a very long time with the way way that this team was just pretty much a punching bag of, of the league during that stretch and then the third thing that went wrong is of course they could not figure out tim melia in the penalty kick shootout and that unfortunately the quakes become one of the the few team and just kind of a, a not a really good 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 honor of being one of the team that failed to score in a penalty kick, kick shootout and that you know as much as tim melia is one of the best if not the best penalty kick stopper in league history some of the penalties that the quakes took was just awful in that pk shootout and again I, I go back to what i said about why did they not practice pk dur during during the middle of the week to prepare for this and i know some people will say well just because you practice pk shootout during practice it, it's not the same as when you when you are actually stepping up in a game and that i do kind of agree that it is the case but if you don't practice sit during your practice and you just kind of come up during that that moment you know it just makes you even less less confident coming into that shootout and it just i mean i just don't under under understand like you know i've seen pk shootout from the quakes in the past and in the past at least they did decently in terms of that shootout like that kind of shootout was just just right up there as as probably the the up there with vancouver when they play against skc and of how how bad they were in that penalty kick shootout and i would say maybe the penalty kick sh shoot shootout that the quakes face against skc was probably even worse than the vancouver one with the the way that at least vancouver scored one pass past skc in that shootout where the quakes didn't even score a single goal during that pk shootout now moving forward for the quakes heading into this off season i mean spend more money please fisher or actually decide to sell sell this team i mean i've been saying this pretty much much every single year and i really don't want to continue to beat the dead horse about talking about the the lack of ambition that this this team had and not spending money but really i i really hope they are actually spending some money and that actually you know as i said about how this team kind of show lack of ambition i will kind of take that back a little bit by saying that at least from what i heard recently the quakes are rumored with a couple of signing especially down in liga mx i know we've been linked with a guy guy from chivas that that could potentially be a guy that that could could solve our attacking issue and then we also link with another attacker down in cruz Azul who is who they said that maybe he's going to be the guy that maybe replace wando in terms of the goal scoring productivity but he was he is a guy that's also kind of kind of near his his 30s which it's kind of weird bring a a guy that is already in your 30s and replace another guy that is about to to retire after this season but you know i'm really hoping that whatever the quakes are bring 
bring in from Liga MX is going to be kind of similar to to the quality of player that Liga MX players that have come to this league. I mean, there's been times where it's been proven that when you decide to go down to Liga MX and bring in some of these players here, there's been times that it work out and there's been times where it doesn't some work out and that in other words it's kind of very hit and miss when you bring in some some product of Liga MX player to that league to come to MOS and I'm really hoping that whoever we bring down there there and and the players that we potentially are going to sign from Liga MX will be more toward the hit hit factor than rather to 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 be be on the miss miss factor and the part where where it's these guys are just going to be com completely flop when they come to this team team from Liga MX. Now the second thing moving forward for the Quakes is that you know make Wando last season memorable and I kind of also mentioned this before where you know this might be it for Wando knowing the fact that he signed a one-year contract and that everybody knows that this is probably his farewell tour and the way to make Wando last season memorable is that this team not only need to make the playoffs but they need to maybe go deep in the playoffs or even challenge for MLS Cup because I, I think probably the, the, the dream scenario for Wando in terms of his last season is going to be walk out as a champion and lifting that MLS Cup as he right, right into the sunset and I hope maybe that is going to be a moment to of course make make his very last season very memorable because if there is one guy in the league that deserved to have some success either in the playoffs or even winning a trophy to finish his career it has to be wando of of such a, a legendary career that he's been having in over his time with the quakes uh and then the the third thing moving forward for the quakes is they need reinforcement in the defense and a dp level of number 10 uh as i said with vaco and erickson now now basically no longer with this team and that that does open some dp slot hopefully they use that on a number number 10 and and maybe also think about, uh, besides that, maybe you need to reinforce the defense a little bit. Because you don't go with the same def defense heading into next season that conceded the most goal in from from last season. It conceded 50 plus goals. So I expect there should be some restructure in terms of that defense this off, off season. But most importantly, we need to get a DP level of a number 10 player because it's been proven that if you want to have success in this league and if you want to make a deep run into the playoffs or even compete for MOS Cup you need to have a quality kind of designated player level of a central attacking midfielder to be able to fire you into that spot but yeah there you have it that is pretty much it for my moving forward series about the Quakes let me know in the comments below what do you think of of this and you know if you you are a Quakes fan like myself let me know in the comments what do you think went right, what went wrong, and most importantly, moving forward, what is this team going to look like. But until then, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys next time.